Hey guys, Rad Performance here. Uh, we're going to be doing a series about overhauling the Rochester carburetor. Uh, mainly all of these came on General Motors. They actually came on other vehicles throughout the years. Uh, these two carburetors, I have two of them here. This happens to be an 800 CFM Rochester. It came on a lot of the big block Cadillacs and even had some Buicks that actually got them. Um, but uh, very hard to find, um, especially I'm going to be using it for a Chevy application, but I'll use the 800 base, uh, and I have a Chevy carburetor here, which I'm going to show you. But what I wanted to show you was simple enough of how you can pick out an 800 as opposed to a 750 Rochester, which first visual, um, they kind of look similar, the, except for reading... The, the, the date codes, which are right here, and the Rochester codes, they're normally coded for each individual engine combination and manufacturer. And if you give me a, a link down, if you have a question about decoding it, or if you have one, send me a message, and I'll be happy to try to help you out. A lot of these um, are, can be broken down by vehicle and year, and just specific what the application was. GM was very good with uh, documenting it. They just have numerous amounts of variation as they were building engines. So this I picked up from a swap meet. I've actually used these in the past. I have quite a, quite a few of them. Uh, so currently the interest came that I need one for a big block Chevy. So I'm going to be overhauling it. So I just wanted to show you real quick as to how you can tell. If you're at a swap meet, I'll try to do it the easiest way, but then I'll take it apart, and then you'll be able to really uh, identify it. So let me just try to stick a light in the, in the back, maybe, and then you'll be able to, to see it. So as you look down the throat of the carburetor, so you just go up, you hold the throttle open, and if you look down in here, there's a little ridge. All the Rochesters have it, but the first thing you look at on an 800 is the ridge is smaller, but sometimes that's not easy enough for you. If you can make it out, there's a little hump right here. It looks like a baby bump, where if you look right there in the corner, right off the Venturi and the, and the jet extension right here where the primary is you could see a bump right down in here as opposed the bump is bigger than the ridge of the carburetor that is why you know it's an 800 they only made two 750 CFM and 800 throughout the years people have said they made 795s and you know 600s and whatever else no they only made two 800s, they came on all the big block caddies in, in the mid-70s, and a few of the Buicks. I don't know of any Chevys that even got them. Every time Chevy needed a better carburetor, a bigger carburetor, I should say, they put on a Holley. All the other manufacturers, it was the luxury carburetors, came with the 800s. The way GM limited it was with the secondaries. These, these on the caddy go almost 90, which is full CFM. You'll get a lot of these where you touch them, and they won't go past maybe three quarters or not even, and we can modify that here um, in the hat, which I'll show you on the later videos. So I'll have a later video showing you how I'm going to overhaul them, but I just wanted to show you a quick thing about how to identify an 800 CFM Rochester as opposed to a 750. You crank it open, you look inside, there's a small ridge, and if you see a baby bump, it's an 800. If you don't see a baby bump, it's a 750, because the area of that baby bump is the full ridge, which I'll show you right here on this 750, which came on a, uh, a 79 Camaro. So this one I can show you very easily. You'll be able to see it. This ridge goes all the way around. There's no baby bump anywhere. When you come off of the primary, it's the same ridge all the way around. Dead giveaway, it's a 750 Rochester. 
Nine out of ten rock chesters you walk up on at a swap meet are going to look exactly like this. It's going to be a 750. Once in a blue moon, you're going to find the 800. And you're going to see, if you see a baby bump right here, you know right away it's an 800. Regardless of what the numbers, maybe somebody fooled with them. But that's the dead giveaway. And then you can break it down by the numbering sequence of the year and um, everything else. So I'm going to be going into it more thorough in the next video when I take it apart and clean it. You have your jets here. You have your secondary. You have your metering of the power valve. And you have your needle and seat. And I'll show you a few items in there how you can tune this and make it adjustable if, if you need to. This one actually had it modified already. It was knocked out and tapped to put an adjustable screw. So you can come in here and then tune it. Um, but that's basically it. So the Rochester, great carburetor, great street carburetor, especially for mileage and power um, and, and idle quality. If you know how to tune them, they always got a bad rap, but most of the times they were not overhauled pro properly, which is why people always had issues. So uh, I'll show you in the next videos. We're going to break them down and clean them. We'll take our time. We'll overhaul it and you'll have a good rock solid foundation for any street mod, street rod out there. Uh, it'll be great. And a lot of the late 70s and early 80s, you guys that are running the 700 overdrives and the, and the 200s, they needed that throttle cable, that TV cable. It, it adjusts perfectly. The Rochester has that throttle arm that everything works out perfect. Uh, when you step up to different carburetors, you need to buy different adapters and different cable hold downs. So this may fit your bill more than any other carburetor out there and they're still reasonably cheap at the swap meet the parts are getting a little more expensive but it is a good um, option for you if you want to keep it with the rochester the idle quality and the gas mileage so look forward to the next video uh, please like and subscribe and like i said if you guys have questions about the 800 or about the the numbers on the side if you're curious about the ones you have or if you had any other questions, just, just send me a message and I'll be happy to uh, address it for you. So see you guys soon. Have a good one.